Hello again. Today, I'm going to be discussing of how Calvinism can easily be proven wrong simply by the Word of God and just by simply examining the Bible, examining the Scriptures. So, without further ado, let's start off in prayer. Mary and Father, thank you for those who are listening. Lord, I ask you to bless the listeners and help give clear understanding of your Word. I ask this according to your will. Let it always be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. So Calvinism, if you do not know, um, <clears throat> I'm not a expert, but there's some couple um, issues that I want to highlight um, that it's heretical and a damnable heresy. Calvinism believes that um, and just do a brief summary that people do not have free will um, to choose to believe or not to believe on Jesus. They believe, at least the people I have talked, at least online who are Calvinists, that faith is a gift from God. So people cannot come up with faith of their own. It has to be completely on God, which is crazy because the Bible never teaches that. We'll see as we go through this. The list of scriptures I'll provide for you today. And because there's no free will, you're either God's elect, means you're saved, or you're not his elect, which means you're going to hell, and there's nothing you do to change that predicament. Now, if you're listening to this, does that sound like good news to you? I know for me, that's not good news. Um, and how would you know that you're God's elect? Well, they might say, well, look at your works. Look at your fruit. There should be evidence of your faith. And they like to take um, James chapter 2 out of context. A lot of false teachers do this. Um, perhaps on another video, we'll discuss on that. But I just want to focus just kind of that basic Calvinist doctrine. Like I said, I'm not an expert um, in their theology. I just know a couple big main ideas of what someone has told me Calvinism is. But third, let's go on. So first thing is you hear um, a lot of Calvinists, Calvinists, or Calvinism, or also known as Lordship Salvationists. They will believe that you have to turn from sin and plus put your faith in Jesus to be saved. Or as a damnable heresy, if you believe that, then you're not saved today. We're going to scripture. So, according to them, turning from your sins, repent of your sins, they think it means turning from sin. That's not what repentance means, but we'll get to that down the veil. But that means you have to turn away from sin, which by default, that's a work, because it's something that you have to do. And of course, the Bible does teach that doing any form of deeds, no matter how good it is, it will never be good enough in God's sight and can't justify you and you cannot go to heaven and it can't save you. Also, turning from sins by default will mean you have to keep God's law, right? Which basically means you have to be sinless and no one's sinless. We all broke God's law. We still break God's law unknowingly. We're not even aware of the sins we commit. And that's just why this is so dangerous. But also, we'll, we'll go into the, the good news of the gospel, right? So, of course, you can't be justified, and nor you can't be saved by works. First verse I have you for today, <clears throat> great verse, Romans 3.20. Therefore, therefore, by the deeds of the law, right, the Ten Commandments, um, you know, the Bible, the Word of God, try and keep them, or people say, you know, turn from sin, that they mean keep God's law. Shall no flesh be justified in his sight. There you go, you, you can't be saved. God's not impressed with it. So stop trying. There is something I will save. Well, I'll get to you in this moment. For by law is a knowledge of sin. The purpose of God's law, as stated in this verse, is to just point out our sinful condition. We are sinners and we are in need of a Savior. And that Savior is Jesus Christ. Right? Go on. Now, of course, salvation is a free gift from God. And now, I want if I if this on this point or make a point on this. If it's a free gift, 
why you need to work it to get it. If you have to work it by turning away from your sin, it's no longer a gift because you have to work it, right? I say here, if you have to work to keep it a gift, is it really a gift? Also, if you have to work, is that gift really free? Of course not. It's not a free gift if you have to work it. And of course, that's what the Word of God says here in Ephesians 2, 8 9. For it's by grace you are saved. Right? You watched my videos before. <clears throat> I make emphasis a lot on this verse a lot. Grace is God's work. Not your work. Not, not about you. Or disappoint. It's about what God's done for you. It's good news. And it's through faith. And not of yourselves. See, it's not about you. It is a gift of God. Not of works, at least a man should boast. See, we cannot work to earn salvation. We can't be good enough. We can't turn from sins. Because no matter how hard we try to turn from sin, there's always going to be a sin that we forgot to repent of. And according to Calvinists, they'll just say you're just not God's elect. Because Calvinists, if they're being honest, they believe they are sinless. And they're liars. And I'll prove that in the Bible here as we go on. So if you ever talk to someone who might be a Calvinist, I know I have, uh, that might ask you, well, what does faith mean? You know, or what's saving faith? And the thing is, false teachers and religious people will complicate things. That's not meant to be complicated. Again, the Bible does teach that God's not the offer of confusion. God's word is so simple, so straightforward, you can't miss it. Unless you're not his child, you're not saved. And you're purposely twisting the scripture and teaching the doctrine of devils. That's what the Bible teaches, right? But faith is not that hard. You and I do faith, exercise faith every day in life. Faith just means you put your complete trust in whatever that directed object is. In this case, we're talking about salvation, how to get to heaven. It's towards Jesus Christ and his finished work on the cross. You know, Jesus died on the cross for everybody's sins. He's fully God, fully man, sinless, perfect, kept all the commandments on our behalf. He died, was buried, and he rose again from the grave on the third day. And the only requirement for salvation is just trust in that, right? That's what we mean when we say belief. That's what God means when we say belief or have faith. So just to um, make it real simple, God's word is so easy, so easy to understand. Just gotta believe it. Hebrews chapter 11, first uh, one. For now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Pretty simple, right? Is the evidence of the unseen thing it means you're fully convinced that this is true. There's no, and if you're fully convinced, how there could be any room for doubt? If you really believe it in something, especially Jesus, how there can be doubt? I'm not saying it can't be happen. There might be someone who are saved believers, they might doubt salvation. A lot of times, this gospel is not committed, not, I'm sorry, not communicated clearly. And easily, where people can understand it. And that's a problem with a lot of churches today. But praise God, there are the faithful few who do have the gospel and do communicate clearly. And I pray this will be so simple for you to understand. A child should be able to get this with ease. Okay, now let's break down repentance. Okay, the reason why repentance cannot mean turn from sin is a verse in the Bible. Right? In this verse, it said God repented. And question you gotta ask yourself, right? If repentance means turn from sin, then is God a sinner? Did God have to turn from sin? Of course, a silly question. No, God's holy. He's perfect and sinless. Right? And the verse also shows that turning from sin is indeed a work, and it's an evil work at that. By God's own definition. John 3.10. And God saw their works. Right, and they turn that they turned their evil way, and God repented for the evil 
that he has said that he would do unto them, and he did night. Repentance in the Bible simply just means changing your mind or having a changed mind. That's it. It's not that hard. Not that complicated. It's really that simple. Even going back to the Greek definition, metoia in Greek means a change of mind. As appears of one who repents, a purpose as he has form of something he has done. Right? Change your mind. An example here, what sinner needs to do to get saved is change your mind from unbelief about Jesus to belief. Now believe Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He died on the cross for your sin. Life, death, burial, and resurrection. And trust in what Christ did alone. You, the thing is, you have to actually believe that, though. That's all that's required for salvation. You just got to believe it. Romans 4 5. But to him that work is not, but belief, believeth on him that justify the ungodly, right? A lost sinner. His faith, simply what he believes, is counted for righteousness. A moment. The moment you believe in Christ and you trust in his finished work, you are saved the moment you believed it. It's instant, permanent, and unchanging. Can't be done. You can't lose salvation. It's immediate. And you're right with God because Christ did the work for you and for me. And all we got to do is just receive this gift by believing on Jesus. That's all it requires to get to heaven. Trust what Jesus did for you. Of course, now, a, a good question that Calvinists have to ask, since they believe, which is not from the Bible, that you had to turn from your sins, then here, I got a couple of questions. How are they going to answer this? But what about the sins you're unaware of committing? What about the sins you don't know that you committed? You know, that we're not aware of. In fact, God has such a perfect, holy, moral standard that you sin just one time, which will include the sins you and I are not aware of, that means we're con condemned and we're going to hell. What about, yeah, I just repeat myself here, so apologize. I say it in James 2.10, for who shall keep the whole law, and yet then at one point, he's guilty of them all. Honestly, this is being like extreme hypothetical. No one has ever kept the whole law. But here, James is telling to believers in his letter, Christians, even if you could and say you missed this one part, you're still guilty of breaking all the commandments. So he's throwing extreme hypothetical to show how silly it is that thinking turning from your sins, keeping God's commandments, live a good, holy life, etc., fill in the blank. It's not possible. It can't be done. This is why we need a Savior. It's why Christ came. He came to fill where we failed. It's really that simple. Of course, if you talk to any Calvinists, they'll say, you know, turn from your sins, you know. Then they'll have to, a lot of them will think that they have turned from all their sins. If we're being honest, if they are honest with their worldview, and of course, no one has ever turned from all their sins. Everybody continue has some point of sin in their life daily. Say as First John one eight, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So there you go. If you're saying you never have a single sin and you haven't committed, that means you never repented from all your sins. Because everybody has committed and is continuing to commit a sin. At least they will until Jesus Christ comes back. And then we'll get raptured up and we'll get our new glorified body. But until then, we still have the sinful flesh that wrestles against the spirit. That's the Bible teaches. But we are saved simply because we believe on Jesus. We are sanctified because Christ did the work for us. That simple. Just gotta believe it. Now, unfortunately, this does break my heart. 
Um, and I'm pretty sure any people um, who wants people to get saved. But the reality is, it's even the Bible. There are a ton of fake Christians out there uh, who were never saved to begin with. They're, these are like your modern day religious Pharisees or these Calvinists. You know, and they're trusting in their works. Calvinists will kind of say it and they say, well, the evidence you're God's elect and you're saved is your faith will come by your works, which means they're trusting your works. Um, the faith and works go hand in hand. But even if you don't show works, because we're not saved by works, as we read scripture earlier, you're still saved. The money you believe. Perhaps I need to do a video on James chapter 2. We're going to guide you through in context of what that passage is actually saying. But for now, let's stay on this video. Of course, um, there's a group of people, these are Christians, that Jesus warned um, in context of this, I think he's speaking to his disciples, and, and he's warned for you and I that there's going to be a lot of people who think they're Christians, they think they're safe, in fact, they're not. Right? These are just religious, unsaved people. They're Christian by name only. And it's because they trust in their works. They haven't truly believed in Christ. As we will see in this verse, this is also Jesus' own words saying this. So Matthew 7, 22, 24. May was saying to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Again, we, there's no relationship there. You weren't saved to begin with. Jesus doesn't know them. I say right here, depart from me, you that work iniquity. Iniquity, iniquity sorry, means evil. You that work evil. Works are evil in God's sight, outside of God's grace. Outside of not just believing in Jesus. You trying to justify yourself to think your, your good works or you going to church or being baptized or turning from sin. Notice you're focused on yourself. You're not focusing on Jesus like this group of false Christians here or false converts. They're trusting in their many wonderful works or be religious. Whatever, fill in the blank. Anything apart from believe in Christ alone to be safe. Pray that you're not going to be one of the many people who end up in hell because you refuse to believe what God's word says by belief in his son, Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. Right. Okay. Now, what I said about Calvinists, they believe um, the doctrine of predestination, that God um, already knows who will save and who's not saved, which is true, but here's a lie that comes in. Um, but Calvinists believe that God will just pick who his elects are, who are safe, and the rest are just condemned to hell. And there's nothing to do about it. That's completely unbiblical. God is not this mean, cruel Calvinist God. God is love, and he wants everyone to be safe. In your time, this is a good rec website I recommend. Click this link. Of course, I'll have a link in the, in the description to this document. So you can do your time and research. As you're going through this video. So check them out. You can search topics. And bring Bible verses from the King James Bible. Because that's a true pure word of God. For English speaking people. But for ado. Here's a verse that brings clarity. Um, what God's word actually says. And of course. That's not true. God wants everybody to be saved. He wants you and I. He wants everyone to go to heaven. But everybody won't go to heaven. God knows that. He gave us a free will. But Jesus still died across for sins of the whole world. People have to choose to believe. So this is one verse I picked from this website of main verses. I encourage you to check them out. There's many more. Um, and you can also can read whole chapters and read in context. I recommend that you do. Okay, Ephesians 11 through 1.12. In whom we also have uh, obtained an inheritance, right? Inheritance is something that you know you, that you get. You know, maybe you, you heard or experienced self. You know, loved one died, and you might inherit their money. Kind of same thing, but this is spiritual inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of Him 
who works out all things, this is talking about God, after the counsel of his own will. This is according to God's will. I have verses down here I'll show you. And God's will is that everybody gets saved, that everybody believes on Jesus. That's God's will. Okay, that we should be the praise of his glory who first trusted in Jesus. There you go. God's will is that everybody will trust in Jesus, believe on Christ. That was God's original plan. That's what God predestined everybody to do. But not everybody will do that. Many people reject the gospel message. But God is a gentleman. He's not going to force himself on anybody. He gives people free will. This guy wants someone that wants him and have a relationship with him. I pray you make the right choice today if you're not saved. That to believe of what I'm presenting to you for God's word. Trust in Jesus. Go trust in yourself. Okay, here's saying God loves everyone. His will is that no one goes to hell. In fact, God wants everyone to have free will to believe or not to believe, to be saved or not saved. Which is done according to their own faith, according to what they believe. A lot of people will say what they believe. And based on what they believe, you can get a good indicator if they're truly saved or not saved. Right? John 640. Remember I told you earlier in this verse? He predestined working to the purpose of end, works all things after counsel of his own will. Okay. Here's a verse that's going to tell you what his will is. Here is God's will. This is the will of him that sent me. Jesus speaking here in this verse. That everyone which sees the Son, that can be you if you're hearing God's word today, and you're hearing about Jesus, and believeth on him, may have everlasting life, and I'll rise him up in the last day. So there you go. God's will is everybody gets saved. That whoever will believe in Jesus have life everlasting. That's heaven, folks. Everlasting means forever. God is not trying to confuse you here. He said it crystal clear in the King James. Can't mistake it. This gift was, is meant to go on forever. Because God did the work. And God does continue does the work in and through you. He that began the good work in you will finish it. So, I might butcher that verse, but if you have read your Bibles really well, you probably know a verse I just butchered. <laughs> but it, the whole point is, God's continue not a, just a work to get you saved, but he will work for you in your sanctification, because in fact, you're already sanctified in Christ. God, God basically figured out everything out that needs you to get into heaven, and God's saying, hey, just believe on Jesus, receive this gift, free gift of salvation, trust in Jesus, all you have to do. Second Peter 3.9 the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but he is long-suffering towards us, and God is very patient, not willing that any should perish. So for my Calvin friends, if you're listening, why will God choose people to be saved and the rest condemned to hell? At the same time, God, we read, God's will is for everyone, to have everlasting life. To be saved. And he's not willing that any should perish. See. You see how. Dangerous his doctrine is. They're making God. To seem like he's some kind. Of cruel God. And it, it's a lie. It's not how God is. God is long patient. Suffering. He's merciful. He loves you. And he wants you to be saved. And have a relationship with him. And you can go in a place called Paradise Heaven as well. So there will be no more suffering. No more sorrows. And that day, I believe, is coming sooner than we realize. But there you go. See, God does not want anybody to go to hell. That's why he wanted to perish. But should come to repentance. Right? He wants er God wants everybody to change your mind. Calvin friends, if you out here... I pray that for you too. I pray you would change your mind. You let go of this false doctrine. I say this, tell you the truth in love. I'm not trying to be mean or cool hearted in any way, but I'm trying to expose the lie you're holding on to and choose on Jesus. People have free will. And if you're teaching, turning from your sins, and some are elect and not 
elect, you need to let go of that fierce, cynical religious pride and go to God's word. And if you are watching this video, please go to God's word. See in the scriptures if what I'm telling you is the truth. If I'm not telling you the truth, then by all means, ignore this video, move on with your day. But if I'm telling you the truth, and you're rejecting God's word, you're in great danger. But if I'm telling you the truth, and I'm providing main scriptures in context, then what's stopping you from believing on Jesus? If you're countless today, you can get saved right now as a moment. You can just pray to God and say, Lord, sorry I was being a religious Pharisee, self-righteous, proud and arrogant. Arrogant. I hear your word today, and I'm trusting in Jesus alone to get me saved. And everybody has an opportunity. Everybody has an opportunity to hear the gospel and get saved. I pray if you're a Calvinist, I pray you get saved today before it's too late for you. John 3.18. This verse tells you that people do have a choice to believe or not to believe. That indicates free will. Right? And our next verse shows that faith is a person's choice. You can choose to believe or not to believe. You don't God doesn't have to work some kind of miracle to have you believe on him. Um, it's a choice of the heart. Yes, does God work in the hearts of men? Absolutely. But you can choose to believe this or not. It's your choice. And you and God. John three eighteen. But he that believes on him, that's Jesus, not condemned. You're not condemned. You're not going to hell if you trust in Christ's life, death, burial, and resurrection. That he died for your sins. You trust in Christ alone, what he did for you. Here, he, God's promised you, you're not condemned. However, there is a condition. He that believeth not is condemned already. If you've seen my videos before, I told you the only sin that you cannot be saved from is the sin of unbelief. Not believe on Jesus. If you refuse to not to believe, then yes, you are on your way to hell. Crystal clear. Why? And here God tells you why in this verse. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Because people are going to hell because simply their unbelief towards Jesus. Not trusting in him as their Lord and Savior. Not believing in, in Christ alone to get saved. That's the only reason people go to hell. It's that simple thing, not believing on Jesus to get saved. So when people say, oh, you know, um, well, your faith has to come by works, or the evidence your faith is come by works, they're believing in themselves. They're not believing in Jesus. They might believe in their own faith, but they're not believing on Jesus, what he did for them. You gotta be careful, folks. You gotta go to the Bible and get the truth for yourself. Only God can show you the truth of his word. I can't do it. No teacher on the internet can do it. Only God himself, if you're really seeking him, you will find him and he will show you the truth in the scriptures. Luke 7 50. And he said to them, This is Jesus, thy faith. Right, thy is also you can say your faith. I have saved thee. Go in peace. Notice that Jesus didn't say the faith that work in you saves you. Like Calvinists teach and believe the definition of faith. No, Jesus said to this woman, Your faith has saved you. She's saved the moment she believed on Christ. I hope this video has been simple. Straightforward. Of course, there's many more verses that goes much more deep. If you haven't already, I always try to provide a link description, a Bible way to heaven, a verse by verse teaching, about a 30 minute long video. If you don't know you're going to heaven, please check that video and go to God's Word. God will show you. And it's simple, and yes, it is easy. The only hard part is that people struggle with is believing what God said in his word. That's the only thing that's hard. I pray you believe today and get saved if you haven't done so already. If you believe, 
believer, you have trust in Christ as your Savior, then welcome to the video. If you think this would be a huge blessing that other people need to hear it, please, um, you can like, share the, the video, and if you want to see any more content, you can just, um, subscribe to my channel. And I hope you have a blessed day. Amen.